Welcome to 20 Minute Photo Guide. I'm Don, I do most of the still photography. I'm Anya and I do most of the videos. We'll take you to our favorite places, we'll help you learn best locations, employ proper gear, and discover magic light. Thanks for coming along. Arches National Park is located in Southeast Utah. This park was established in 1929 and it contains the greatest density of natural arches in the world. There are more than 2,500 cataloged arches here, along with towering spires, pinnacles, balanced rocks, and distant mountains. All of this, of course, is a landscape photographer's heaven. The scenery of arches is always there, but late March through April are the best weeks for photography. This is when spring storms often bring dramatic light and the park isn't as crowded then as during the hot summer months. And there's a few bonuses. Wildflower blooms are possible. Plus there's snow on the LaSalle Mountains in the distance. Arches National Park is a sunrise and early morning and a late afternoon and a sunset place to be. It's also great for night photography, stars, the Milky Way, and things like that. Photography location number one is the windows area. This is best on a clear or a semi-clear day and you should arrive 30 to 40 minutes before the sunrise. Bring your wide angle, something like a 17 to 40 millimeter lens and also a mid-range 28 to 200 millimeter lens or something in that area. Bring a tripod and a polarizing filter. Start out with silhouettes of the north window's arch. Have somebody go up there and model for you if you have the chance to do that. And then as the sun rises, shoot turret arch, backlit windows arches, and then walk up and through north window arch to a little rock outcropping from where you can see turret arch framed up by north windows arch. This is a classic shot in Arches National Park. And for a sense of scale, have a person standing in north window arch if you have a friend or somebody nearby that you can ask to stand up in there. So after the sun has been up for an hour or two and you finish exploring north and south window, Head across the parking lot to the trailhead for Double Arch. This easy four-tenths of a mile hike leads to spectacular Double Arch. Explore really wide angles here, something in the 15 to 18 millimeter range. Find rock foregrounds and put lots of sky in the shot and even try a person up in the arch for scale. Photography location number two is the famous delicate arch. This is best on a partly cloudy or a totally clear day. And it's a late afternoon and a sunset place. It does require a 1.5 mile one way hike with 500 feet of elevation gain. And you should bring your wide angle, something like a 16 to 35 millimeter and also a mid-range, something like a 28 to 200 lens. Bring a polarizing filter and a tripod and be prepared for crowds of people. About 200 yards from the delicate arch viewpoint, 
On the right hand side, as you're heading towards delicate arch, is a tiny arch. It's called frame arch. Now that requires a little bit of a scramble to get up to, but there's a decent view of delicate arch through frame arch. And once you get the delicate arch, try all focal lengths. Wait for the last light or even stay for afterglow, cloud colors, do some silhouettes, and you could even do night shots from here. Photography location number three is called Broken Arch, and this is best on a clear day or a partly cloudy day. This is a sunrise location. Arrive about 30 minutes before the sun comes up. It's a 0.7 mile easy hike across the sand. You can start off with silhouettes here and then hike through Broken Arch to the other side for first light as the sun comes up and hits Broken Arch. Bring your wide angle lens, something like a 17 to 40 millimeter, and a mid range 28 to 200 millimeter lens, something like that, to pick out details within the landscape. After exploring here at Broken Arch, on the way back to the parking lot, stop at Sand Dune Arch. Sand Dune Arch is almost always in the shade, and it's a nice little arch to explore and a photograph. Photography location number four is Balanced Rock. This is a late afternoon and sunset location. Different views can be had from the 0.3 mile loop that goes around Balanced Rock but I suggest that for the last light, you head down the Willow Flats Road about 100 yards to a parking lot at a pit toilet on the right. Walk from there out onto the flat rocks for the best views of Balanced Rock with the LaSalle Mountains in the background. Bring a mid-range zoom lens, something like a 28 to 200, and use the zoom to pull Balanced Rock closer to the mountains in your composition using the compression that comes from zooming in on two objects that are separated by a distance. Photography location number five is the Devil's Garden area. This includes landscape arch. This is a morning location and it's best on a clear day. Bring a really wide angle lens, something like a 16 to 35 millimeter, and also throw into your bag a macro lens when you do this hike. Because there are lots of flowers along here, and there can be patterns in the sand dunes, in the rocks, and things like that. Landscape arch, I find difficult at best to make great photos. Try going really wide with a 16 millimeter lens, but also put a person in there for scale. Photography location number six is the Park Avenue Trail. This leads down to Courthouse Towers. This is good at almost any time early morning, late afternoon, and even on a cloudy day. Bring your wide angle lens, something like a 17 to 40 millimeter, and also a mid-range 28 to 200. And I'd throw in a macro lens as well. It's a hike of one mile, one way. Along the way, look for this face amongst the rocks. And then, if there's been decent rain and you see puddles around, this is the place to be for amazing reflections of the formations in those puddles.
use a really wide angle lens, something like 15 to 24 millimeters, and get very low for the best results of those reflections. Another photography location is the fiery furnace, but this area requires a reservation or a hiking permit that has to be obtained beforehand. It's an interesting experience. You go with a ranger and you go along and you hike and they point out things. So it's not a kind of a place where you want to bring your tripod and bring an all around lens, something like a 20 to 200 that allow you to zoom in on things as you're walking with the group. But it is a fun experience and it's worth it, although the reservation must be made sometimes weeks in advance. Here's a couple bonuses that I recommend when you're in the Arches National Park area. The first one is 32 miles from Moab. It's called Dead Horse State Park. It's got beautiful wide open canyon views. And the next one is called Mesa Arch. This is actually in Canyonlands National Park. And that's 39 miles away from Moab. Both of these are highly recommended and they're both morning shots. A quick summary of Arches National Park. Timing wise, you want to be there late March through April. And equipment wise, you want to bring a really wide angle lens, a medium wide angle lens, a macro lens, and also a medium telephoto lens. Also bring your tripod and it's nice to travel with a friend in case you need somebody to model for you for a sense of scale up in some of the arches. Arches National Park is a great place to be a scenic photographer. There's always something here that you can find. I've covered a lot of the highlights, but of course I didn't cover nearly all of the park. There's backcountry roads, there's backcountry hiking, and there's 2,500 arches that you can search for in this wonderful national park found in southeast Utah. Thanks for joining us on this 20-minute photo guide to Arches National Park. We hope you get there soon and enjoy all that that wonderful park has to offer. Thanks again and see you soon.